good morning to everybody. Uh, and I certainly hope that uh, this uh, webinar presentation today will uh, assist you in uh, understanding some of the cold form steel uh, lateral design provisions uh, in the current uh, code and standards. So let's, uh, let's begin. And uh, just to give you a quick overview of the presentation today, uh, I'm going to start out with some of the uh, references uh, and codes and standards that we should all have in our library as we're uh, doing cold form steel design. Uh, then I'll discuss cold form steel framed diaphragms, cold form steel framed shear walls, cold form steel diagonal strap braced walls, and then I'll go over a few design examples uh, at the end of the webinar. Okay, to begin with, um, some of the uh, standards that we should have in our uh, library uh, as we're doing coal from steel design uh, is the uh, what's called the North American um, specification for cold form steel uh, design of members. Um, and this is AISI S100. It was formerly known as the NASPAC. Uh, now it's uh, AISI S100-07, which was adopted by the 2009 IBC. And the supplement two uh, that goes along with uh, AISI S107 is adopted by the 2012 IBC. The AISI standards, uh, and there are several of them that are adopted by the code, um, are also used uh, for cold form steel framing. Uh, and this includes general provisions, floor and roof system standard, the wall stud design standard, the header design standard, lateral design standard, truss, and prescriptive methods. The AISI cold form steel design manual, this is known uh, by the alphanumeric designation D108. This is similar to, if you're familiar with the AISC steel construction manual, uh, it has uh, a lot of beneficial design examples in there relating to member design, connection design, and at the very back it also has several uh, test um, standards that were, have been developed by AISI. Then there's the AISI design guide. This has numerous examples in it uh, for doing cold form steel design. Uh, the latest version is D11007. And then there's uh, a, a very good text if you really want to get into some of the interest, um, uh, history, I should say, uh, in more detail of the cold form steel design provisions. Uh, this is in the cold form steel design textbook, fourth edition, a very good reference to have. And then lastly, uh, the Structural Engineer Association of California has a structural uh, or seismic design manual, the latest version being the 2009 IBC. Uh, and there's three manuals uh, all together. Uh, I understand that they're coming out with the 2012 IBC version and that this should be out sometime in the fall. Uh, September or October, I believe, is the date that they're looking for. And they'll have more than, uh, I think, three volumes in this 2012 version. The reason I bring this one up is that there is a good uh, force transfer uh, example in volume two. Uh, and this is in a um, uh, light frame uh, design example and is somewhat applicable to cold from steel design when you're doing force transfer around an opening uh, in a typical um, type two shear wall. And quickly, some cold from steel support online. The AISI website uh, is steel.org. The Steel Framing Alliance uh, website is steelframing.org. And then, of course, the Cold Form Steel Institute.org. And then CCFSS Online. So, this is the uh, Center for Cold Form Steel Structures. Uh, another great uh, reference for you to, to uh, help in your Cold Form Steel design and, and questions. All right, the 2012 uh, IBC, Section 2210. Uh, is on cold form steel. Of course, chapter 22 of the IBC deals with steel. 2210 uh, is on cold form steel. And what it points to is the AISI specification, which is S100. And then it goes on to say, uh, design a cold form steel stainless steel shall be in accordance with ASCE 8. Uh, and then it says light frame construction shall also comply with section 2211. And we'll go over that in just a little bit. Uh, and then down below here in 2210, it deals with uh, cold from steel decks, uh, non-composite and steel roof deck. I'll go over that in a slide or two uh, in a moment here as well. Uh, seismic requirements for cold form steel structures when you're using the R-factor table, 
um, the R factor table. Let me just get the pointer here. Uh, when you're doing ASCE 7 table 12.2-1, you're choosing an R factor, and it says that when you're doing that, you need to comply with AISIS 100, ASCE 8. Uh, and then for cold form steel special bolted moment frames, uh, you are to use AISI S110. And this is a new standard that was uh, introduced and a new uh, system, I should say, that was introduced in ASCE 710. Um, and so the R factor for that, I believe, is a three and a half. Thank you.